A very good morning dear students. We are welcome to our economics class. We are today we are in the fourth lecture of chapter 2. In my last class I have explained what is consumer's equilibrium and how a consumer achieves or attains his equilibrium in case of one commodity that we had discussed. Today we will see that definitely in the real life situation a consumer does not purchase only one commodity for his one satisfaction rather he purchases more than one commodity say two commodities or more than two commodities. So the condition which was applying in case of one commodity will not be applied in case of two or more than two commodities. <clears throat> Today we will see how a consumer attains his equilibrium when he consumes two goods X and Y. So dear students let us see what is happening over here. Take a screenshot of the writings first. And now, consumers equilibrium in case of two commodities. Let us suppose a consumer consumes only two commodities X and Y. Commodity X and commodity Y, these are two, com two, two commodities that our consumer is consuming. The consumer is having his limited money income. The consumer is having the prices of the commodity in the market. He is knowing the prices of both the commodities X and Y in the market and he is facing uh, with the limited money income. So let us suppose a consumer consumes only two commodities X and Y and their prices are PX and PY respectively. That means the price of one unit of commodity X is PX and price of one unit of commodity Y is PY. We have supposed it. <coughs> Now, very first thing we have to see that what is how, how, what is the what are the conditions of consumer's equilibrium. In case of their students, we will see there are two conditions of consumer's equilibrium. In case of two or more than two commodities, we are just focusing our attention on in case of two commodities. If we understood how, what, what is the condition, how a consumer achieves equilibrium in case of two commodities, we can just generalize it on n number of commodities. Conditions of consumer's equilibrium. A consumer will be in equilibrium of when consumer's equilibrium, I told you, it means maximization of satisfaction. Consumer's equilibrium means maximization of satisfaction when the following two conditions are simultaneously satisfied. Condition number one, a consumer gets maximum satisfaction when the ratio of marginal utility of two commodities to their respective prices are equal. Remember just in my last class, I have told you what is the condition of consumer's equilibrium in case of one commodity. I told you, student, that a consumer attains his equilibrium when marginal utility of that commodity expressed in terms of money is equal to its price. But here, what it is, a consumer is consuming two different commodities, X and Y. The consumer's income is given. And consumer is knowing what are the prices of the commodity. Let the consumer is consuming two commodities X and Y. The price of X is PX in the market. Price of Y is PY in the market. The consumer has limited money income of rupees M, suppose. Now, how he will distribute these M rupees over the two commodities X and Y so as to get maximum satisfaction, so as to get the equilibrium. So, the first condition says, if we take the ratio of marginal utility of commodity X to its price 
and ratio of marginal utility of commodity y to its price and if these two ratios are equal then we will say that the consumer has attained his equilibrium once again i am reading it out a consumer gets maximum satisfaction that means a consumer maximizes his utility a consumer attains his equilibrium when the ratio of ratio ratio of mu mu means marginal utility of the two commodities to their respective prices are equal that is mu x by mu if mu x by px what is mu x marginal utility of commodity x by consuming one additional unit of the commodity divided by its price will be equal to mu y by p y it implies that consumer spends his income in such a way that the utility gained from the last rupee spent on its commodity is equal that means suppose consumer is consuming three units of commodity x so where what it will be a for commodity x marginal utility of third third unit consumed divided by the price of commodity x we will get a value and marginal similarly the suppose the consumer has consumed five units of commodity y three units of commodity x and five units of commodity y when the consumer is consuming so we are finding that mu x y p x is equal to mu y by p y so mu y by p y means the last unit consumed by the consumer and that last unit of commodity y is marginal utility to the price of commodity y mu x by p x is equal to mu y by p y this implies that the consumer spends his income in such a way that utility gained from the last rupee spent on its commodity is equal students you can write this line also only this line or in order to make it understand more understandable you can write the second one so this is the first condition so for very first condition say mux by muy is equal to mu mu x by p y is equal to mu mu x by p x is equal to mu y by p y mu x by p x what it is marginal utility of commodity x to its own price and what is mu y by p y mu y means marginal utility of commodity y to its price so marginal utility per unit of price of x must be equal to marginal utility per unit of price of y must be equal this is the very condition marginal utility per unit of price of commodity x must be equal to marginal utility of y per unit of its price now the second condition second condition very clear i told you the very concept of cardinal utility analysis or marshallian utility approach is based on ldmu law of diminishing marginal utility the law of diminishing marginal utility must operate if mu does not fall suppose if ldmu is not operating a consumer will never stop consumption of that good very interesting fact it is if mu if stops falling that means if ldmu is not operating then a consumer will never stop consuming that commodity now our assumptions are two assumptions we have to make in order to understand this very condition of equilibrium this very equilibrium of two commodities first assumption is consumer has to spend rupees 5 on x and y the consumer is having only rupees 5 in his pocket to spend on commodity x and commodity y the price of each good is rupees per one rupee per one rupee per one that means price of commodity x if you want to purchase one unit of commodity x you will have to spend one rupee and 
if we price of both the commodities are equal commodity x is available rupee 1 per unit commodity y is available rupee 1 per unit it is our supposition it is our assumptions on these assumptions we are discussing the thing now focus on this schedule our consumer here in the first column we have made the units consumed by our consumer and one two three four five i have written second column if you forget third fourth and fifth column what it is if you can concentrate on the first and the second column it is simply an illustration of ldm that means as the consumer goes on consuming more units of commodity x the marginal utility of commodity x also goes on decreasing so obeying the ldmu the marginal utilities are 22 18 15 6 0 these are the marginal utility of commodity x as the consumer is going on increasing his consumption and so at the same time consumer is also consuming commodity y which is another commodity two commodities x and y so when consumer is consuming commodity y definitely there also ldmu will prevail and any y will fall that is 19 15 8 0 minus 4 so first and second shows the operation of ldmu in case of commodity x and first column and third column will show you operation of ldmu in case of commodity y now for convenience we have taken it can be other also we have taken the value of both the commodities are rupee 1 per unit you can take another value no problem in it for, for, the, for the sake of convenience we have taken that the price of each commodity or each commodity x and y is available at the price of rupees 1 only so if you this mux and muy are in utils so what we have to do we have to take the ratio of marginal utility with its price so marginal utility is mux its price is rupee 1 so mux by px that is 20 first units 22 by 1 that will be 22 it is i am writing my mux by px in utils eight second second units mux is 18 your mux by px will be 18 because the common denominator is 1 so it doesn't change it remains same 22 18 15 6 0 Similarly, MUY is given 19, 15, 8, 0, minus 4. When we divide this MUY by its respective price, PY is equal to rupee 1, we will get 19, 15, 8, 0, minus 4. We have done. We have completed the schedule. Hope you have understood it. First one is units consumed. Second one is MUX in utils. Third one is MUY in utils. Fourth one is MUX by PX in utils. What is MUX by PX? It is a ratio. Ratio between marginal utility to its price for each, each and every unit. And this one is margin ratio of marginal utility of commodity Y and its price. So these are the five columns that I have explained. Now we have to see the values where MUX by PX and MUY by PY are equal. See the values are 22, 18, 5, 6, 0. And in this case, in this case, this is 19, 15, 8, 0, minus 4. So two places are there where MUX by PX is equal to MUY by PY. See dear students, this one, MUX by PX is 15, MUY by PY is also 15. So if it happens, then we can say our consumer will consume two units of commodity Y and three units of commodity X. Two, this is two units of commodity Y and three units of commodity X. Now see, two units of commodity Y. How many rupees our consumer is spending? 2 rupees because 2 units means 2 rupees 2 units purchasing power uh, sorry price of 1 commodity 1 unit is rupee 1 so if our consumer is, is spending 2 rupees on commodity Y and 3 rupees on commodity X then total amount of money spent 2 plus 3 5 next there is another case also 
Here you see mu x by px is equal to 0, mu y by p y equals to 0. So what it says? It says 4 units of commodity y and 5 units of commodity x. 4 units of commodity y, 4y plus 5x. For 4th unit of commodity y it is 0, for 5th unit of commodity x it is 0. So if our consumer purchases 4 units of commodity y he has to spend 4 rupees and if our consumer is purchasing 5 units of commodity y he has to spend 5 rupees. So 4 plus 5 how much it is? 9 rupees. Here our consumer's pocket doesn't allow so because our consumer is having only 5 rupees in his pocket to spend. Now see what is happening over here. If our consumer is purchasing 2 units of commodity Y, that means he is spending 2 rupees on Y and 3 units of commodity X, then he is spending 3 rupees on commodity X and in that case MUX by PX is equal to MUY by PY. Hence our, our consumer with his lim limited money income gets maximum satisfaction as per the law of uh, in case of the two commodities. This is known as the uh, law of equimarginal utility and how the consumer attains his equilibrium. Let me explain, expla give the explanation. In first column, units of consumptions are written, is written. Very clear, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In this column 2 and column 3, MUX and MUY are shown in utils. MUX by MUX and MUY. Obey the LDMU. In uh, per unit MUX and MUY. Per unit MUX by MUY means MUX by PX. Per unit, it is the ratio of MUX by PX. In utils, we are plotting it along uh, the 1, 2, 3, 4th column. And MUY by PY we are plotting from the fifth column. So since the, we have supposed that the prices of commodity X and commodity Y is rupee 1, so it hardly makes any difference. Whatever figure I have written over here, in the fourth and fifth figure also I have, I, I wrote the same. Only here I have done MUX 22, P, PX1, MU, MUX 18, PX1 and like, like that. Okay, after that we will start searching which two figures coincides? Okay, these two figures coincide and at the same time these two figures also coincide. This is MUX by PX, this is MUY by PY. Now we will test what is the unique condition of equilibrium. See, dear students, if our consumer purchases 4 units of commodity Y with 5 units of commodity X, then he has to spend rupees 9 of 9 and our consumer has got a limited budget and that budget is rupees 5 to spend on both the commodities so he cannot go for this option. So what? second, this option, 0, 0 option is removed. Now here we are finding 15 and here also 15. Let us see what is happening. 15 in this column means 2 units of commodity Y and 15 in this column means 3 units of commodity X. Okay, 3 units of commodity X will cost 3 rupees and 2 units of commodity Y will cost, two, sorry, two, 3 units of commodity X will cost 3 rupees and 2 units of commodity Y will cost 2 rupees. 3 rupees and 2 rupees together only how much? 5 rupees. So the consumer is having 5 rupees so he will better consume 2 units of commodity Y along with the 3 units of commodity X. Third one, per unit MUX and MUY are shown in column 4 and 5. It also means per rupee MUX and MUY. Per rupee MUX, this is known as per rupee MUX. This is the ratio and this is known as the per rupee MUY. MUX by PX means per rupee MUX or MUY by PY means per rupee MUY. Next, the consumer will be in equilibrium 
when he buys three units of commodity X and two units of commodity Y, his total utility then will be maximum. What will be the total utility? So if our consumer is purchasing two units of commodity Y, two units of commodity Y, what is the total utility? 19 plus 15. Total utility of Y will be 19 plus 15. And to how much units of commodity X he is purchasing? Three units of commodity X he is purchasing. Because these two figure coincide. When he is purchasing three units of commodity X, see what is the total utility he is obtaining? 20 sum of we know the total utility is the sum of marginal utilities. So for after consuming three units of commodity X, he is obtaining the total satisfaction, total utility of 22 plus 18 plus 15. So, the consumer will be in equilibrium when he buys 3 units of X and 2 units of Y, his total utility then will be maximum. TUXY is equal to TUX plus TUY. And now what will be TUX? TUX will be the sum total of these 3. 22 plus 18 plus 15. And what about the total utility of commodity Y? 9, 19 by 15. So 19 plus 15, sorry, 19 plus 15 will be the total utility of commodity Y and 22 plus 18 plus 15 will be total utility derived from commodity X. Altogether, total utility derived from both the commodities will be 89 utils. If consumer spends rupees 5 in any other alternative way, his total satisfaction will be less than 89 utils. If he is spending, he is having only 5 rupees in his pocket. If he wants to spend in some other ways, say 2, uh, two units of commodity in any other, any other combination of commodity X and commodity Y, that will give him a satisfaction but of a lower degree. The fifth point is, at this level of consumption, the condition of consumer's equilibrium, MUX by PX is equal to MUY by PY is satisfied as under 15 by 1 is equal to 15 by 1. Point number six, the consumer will be in equilibrium when he buys three units of X and two units of Y. This is 3X plus 2Y is the optimum consumption bundle. That means three units of X and two units of Y. His total expenditure on 3X plus 2Y will be rupees 5 as shown under. Three units of commodity X at the rate of rupee 1 per unit, 3 into 1 plus 2 units of commodity Y at the rate of Rupee 1 per unit, 2 into 1, because Px is equal to Rupee 1 and Py equals to Rupee 1. So 3 plus 2 that is equal to Rupees 5. Yes, his total money that he wants to spend over the two commodities X and Y is totally exhausted. Dear student, the last point we will see that is the graph, that is the diagram, which is an integral part of economics. Two axes, this is the Y axis we have plotted, this is the X axis. For, this one is y axis for commodity x and this is the x axis for commodity x. This one is y axis for commodity y and this one in this direction. Direction is reversed. In this direction we are plotting x axis for commodity 2. two. Commodity x is plotted along this axis. Commodity y is plotted along this. This is commodity x for commodity x and this one is I have written it. You see, this is y axis we know, this one is x axis. I have written 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that is for commodity x. And this is for commodity y. This is commodity y's y axis. And in this direction, it is commodity y's x axis. We have numbering numbered indifferently 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what we will do. We will plot first x, mux by px we will have to plot, 1 versus 22, this is 1 for commodity x and this is 22, 1 versus 22, 2 versus 18, this is 2 versus 18, second one is 3 versus 15, this is 3 versus 15 I have drawn, 4 versus 6, this is the fourth unit for commodity x and this is 6 and the last one is 5 versus 0, 5 versus 0 is this point. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 points we are getting for commodity X is MUX by PX. We are joining it with the help of the broken straight line. We are getting a downward sloping curve and this downward sloping curve is the curve of MUX by PX. Same thing is happening from the other side. When this one is the Y axis for commodity Y and this one is in this direction. This is the X axis for commodity Y. Our numbering are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these are MUY by PY. Now, 1 versus 19. So, this is 1. 1 versus MUY by PY. 1 versus 19 we have plotted. This is 1 versus 19. Here, MUY by PY curve. Second one is 2 versus 15. 2 versus 15. This very point. 3 versus 8. 3 versus 8, so this is 3 and this one is 8, just below 10, 3 versus 8, 4 versus 0, so 4 versus 0 is this very point only, this point represents 4 versus 0 and the last one on the negative side, 5 versus minus 4, so here it is positive, minus 4 will be somewhere in the negative direction, so 5 versus, this is 5, versus minus 4 goes in the negative side of x-axis. Again, we are getting 5 points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. With the help of the broken straight line, we join all these 5 points and we are getting a curve which is known as MUY by PY. So two curves we are finding, MUX by PX and MUY by PY. The point where MUX by PX curve will intersect, MUY by PY curve will be the point of equilibrium I have represented this point of equilibrium as E and from that point of equilibrium if we draw a perpendicular on X axis it will form on 3 units of X and 2 units of Y. The point where the perpendicular foot of the perpendicular falls when it is drawn from the point of equilibrium we find that point is gives us 3 units of commodity X and 2 units of commodity Y. So, our consumer by the equimarginal utility or by the concept of equilibrium in case of the two commodities by Marshallian utility approach who is having rupees 5 in his pocket and the prices of both the commodities for the sake of convenience are taken as rupee 1 each of Y as well as X will purchase he, in order to maximize his satisfaction, in order to get maximum utility, he will spend 3 rupees on commodity X and 2 rupees on commodity Y. Total amount of money spent is 5. Total utility derived in this case from X and Y. This is the total utility derived from X 22, 18, 15. And this is the total utility derived from Y 19 plus 15. Total he is giving 89 utils. If you make any changes in the combination bundle, you will find the total utility will be lesser than 89 utils. Thus, we can say that our consumer has attained his, attained his equilibrium and he is not ready to change any, any, any in his combination bundle. He doesn't want to make any change in his combination. Uh, just combination bundle of the two commodities because this is the maximum optimal satisfaction that our consumer is getting from the two commodities X and Y whose, whose price in the market is rupees 1 hypothetical example it is and whose money income that means the consumer's money income in his pocket to spend on the two commodities is rupees 5. It is equilibrium is that very point where MUX by PX will inter MUX by PX curve will intersect MUY by PY curve and if from the point of intersection we drop the perpendicular on X axis of both the commodities the number of units represented by X axis for X axis the number of unit is 3 for Y commodity the X axis is this one and the number of commodity is 2 so in the above figure that means upper side I have mentioned this is for the x-axis downwards this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 it is for y-axis so this is the consumer's equilibrium in case of two commodities dear students go through this note again and again 
take the help of your book and then try to understand it. I hope the concepts will be clear if you go once or twice with this notes writings on my board. If you go through it, your concept will be clear. Then again, if you face any problem, any doubt, feel free to ask me the question. So, in this way, the cardinal utility analysis or Marshallian utility approach ends over here. In our next class, we will start the ordinal utility approach or the Higgs Allen indifference curve approach. And if we complete that Higgs Allen indifference curve approach, that means we are completing the chapter of consumer's equilibrium. And after that demand we will start. Okay, wait for the ordinal utility approach or Higgs Allen indifference curve approach. Well, students, that's all for today. In our next class, we will meet once again. Till then, goodbye.